Hi guys, welcome to the uh, FX Street webinar. Uh, my name's Ian Cole, as you're probably aware, and um, I'm going to be your host for the next hour. We've obviously got some pretty important economic releases today. Uh, 12.45, we've got the ECB rate decision. Not expecting any change, uh, but then everybody's anticipating uh, and waiting to Trichet's speech, obviously at 1.30 see whether or not they're going to increase any of the bond buying. Obviously, that would be very pro um, for the euro. And we have seen the euro break out um, higher. Uh, the head and shoulders formation this morning. Um, it was put into the daily report. If you uh, if you managed to read it, it went out at half past seven UK this morning. Uh, we forecast that break. I'm very wary of, um, of any moves up. In, uh, in euro dollar, sterling dollar, uh, Aussie dollar at the moment, and uh, I will explain why. I'm going to show you a fair bit today. I know we, we, we sort of forecast to look at dollar Swiss, Aussie dollar, and dollar CAD, but um, as we do every week, I'm just going to go through all the currency pairs, uh, including gold. I'm also going to look at Dow now as well to give you a bit of an idea um, for, the, uh, for the for the yen crosses as well. Um, one thing I am slightly confused about, which we've been talking about in the room this morning, is the fact that I have a pretty bullish outlook in some of the yen crosses and in the Dow, um, but I've got a bearish outlook for cable, Aussie dollar and euro dollar. So basically, it means if they're if they're all going to be correct, if all the outlooks are going to be correct, then it's all going to be based on the yen. And if it's all based on the yen, then dollar yen is obviously going to be the long-term trade to be. Um, these are fifth waves that I'm talking about, so they're going to be very choppy. It's going to be the end of the sequence as far as Aussie yen is concerned. It will move higher and then and then drop off again. And when they drop off, they're expecting the uh, the moves to the downside to be very aggressive indeed. Um, but let's get down to uh, to some charts. Every, can everybody see the charts all right? I've just had a private message from uh, one of the FX Street staff saying that the, the, the chart's looking a bit tight, but um, I've got it on on one screen, so, um, so it should be fine. Last week, if you were here, we talked about um, gold, and that's the first chart that we're going to have a look at today. Um, whether or not... Big picture. Okay, we break down the uh, break down the sequences. So obviously the weekly, we've got this 160, this sequence from here. Okay, one, two, three, four, and then this to be a fifth wave up. Okay, and ABC would take the pair to 1458. Uh, one, so really getting towards a potential exhaustion zone at the moment. Here we've got some quite decent sub waves as well. Okay, so if this is to be believed, if, if this is one, two, three, four. And these are sub waves, okay, one, two, three, four, and then fifth up. Um, and these fibs hold quite well, okay, 161.8% for this inside third wave. Um, decent candle, but n nothing too special. Um, and then she's pushed lower. It's a monthly one that uh, intrigues me. I've got a bit of a spinning top. I'm not expecting uh, a full reversal from here. But what I am expecting is, is, a, is a bigger correction. So if we're taking it down, so we take it down to the weeklies again. Okay, so here we should get a three wave correction in, in, in four. Okay, so this is obviously one, two, three, three wave correction down in four, holding obviously well above 12650 uh, and then pushing up in five. But if you take it down to my dailies, you can see that we've got an impulsive push up. up a push off the top, okay, and then we've had this corrective three wave manner on the way back up. This is a, a, the same as I do with every single currency pair, every industry, every commodity that I cover. I'm breaking it down from time frames, so I'm looking at longer time frames for aggressive confirmations, i.e., engulfing candles, uh, dojis at certain uh, support resistance lines. Fib levels, pivots, etc. 
Uh, here we can see five down, which look quite good. Now this looks like a corrective three. Hasn't exhausted yet. This candle off the um, off the top, it's not quite there. Okay, I mean I know I'm sort of pulling hairs here, but I mean it's it's a few pips off from being a full engulfing, but it's still looking quite good. I'm looking for signals to go short on this uh, this uh, commodity pretty soon. Okay, normally on a four 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 hour engulfing candle, you will get get a retracement, but normally only to around fifty percent. Okay, give you the opportunity to get a shorting. I'm really going to have to see a move through here now, one thirty uh, one three eight four, to get me bearish on um, on gold. Okay, and then obviously what I'm going to be looking for. And this correction is a move down to here, okay. now around 1.30. And then if we look back to the weekly, okay, well above this target level. So an ABC, I watch this level at the same time, 133.30. This is one of my support. I don't use moving averages as um, crossover signals. What I, what I use them for is support and resistance. So I will be looking to this level, 133.30. But at the moment. And standing aside, I'm a powder dry, um, and I'm looking for a turn a correction in gold for the next leg up. Okay, that brings me on to the Dow. Any questions about gold? Before I switch the chart over. Okay, weekly down, strong move down, which we all knew about. Then we've had this uh, this move back up. Okay, one, two, three, four, five to form A, one, two, three down to form B, and then the C wave. It's not going to be the same as length as wave A. Okay, it's going to be a short a short C. Basically, what I'm looking at here, just to zoom in a bit, we've got some decent fibs on here. As well, okay. One, two, engulfing green, okay, to set you on your way for wave three. Up in three, a pause, pull back at 161.8 percent. And what we have here highlighted is an engulfing green again, okay. At the end of this week, can't take the signal yet because the candle's not closed. Now, if she closes above 11260, then this is the target area, 12566. Obviously, got to break the high next. We're going to get some sort of resistance. But then one, two, five, six, six for this fifth wave. And when that fifth wave is completed, I'm then looking for a large sell-off back down. Well, my first target area will be around here, ten thousand nine thousand five hundred. But this is a key, a key um, candle this week on the Dow. Notice how it hits support. Notice how it's above 50 on the RSI. Okay, everything's bullish about this sequence. It's a prime candle. You either take it on the close with a large stop, obviously the stop below the low, or you look for a small retracement. Again, don't expect too much. If it's a strong rally, the retracements are going to be small, 38.2, maybe 50 if you're lucky, um, to get long on the. On the down, and that, in turn, is giving me um, a view on these yen pairs. So, any questions about the down before we uh, before we go over? No. Go through all the currency pairs. That's the best. Um, we'll see how far we get. It's ten. We've got fifty minutes. We should be able to cover a fair few. Okay. 
I'm always breaking down, um, as I said previously, from weeklies to dailies to hourlies, four hourlies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the higher time frame, the more relevance I'm giving it. What I have here um, is a very relevant candle. This monthly candle is a large engulfing red through all support levels and now trading below 50 on the RSI. It's showing uh, a decent trend reversal. Okay, That to me is a signal to be taking any sort of bounce that we're going to get. And then if we get back, back down, remember this isn't closed yet. Okay, getting back down, we can see five down, we can see three up. Okay, this, because you took out that level, a bull count is now invalidated. The 133.45 was taken out. What happens sometimes, we'll come back to test that breakout line for 133.45 being a potential area to the, to, to, to the upside. But I'm still looking for shorts. Okay, I did trade. Euro dollar this morning on a scout to try and trade the bounce up. Um, but I had my stop in very quickly, too quickly in fact. We got stopped out flat um, and she's since pushed up. But I'm only expecting it to be a reversal. And because I'm only expecting it to be a reversal, I'm not giving uh, or putting too much risk onto the table. I don't want risk in reversals. I don't mind taking risk when, when my view is for a longer term move. So if it's only for a short term bounce, then I'm trying to get my stop in as soon as possible. Okay, daily. It's a little bit more complicated. Five up, three down in B. Again, five up to form C. We're then coming back down. Okay, let's just get rid of these. Uh, 130 was a big figure that we flagged. Uh, a fair bit in the uh, in the daily reports. The move down is impulsive. The retracement was small. Okay. Going back to this big, big, big figure. Okay. Or the big, big outlook. If this was a correction in two, then this wave that we've started down here is wave three. Okay. And wave three, the corrections are a lot smaller than they are in other wave sequences. So we just had a small pullback here. 38.2, but we'll take it, move down to around 161.8% and then a move back up. Now this today, well this this uh, this move back up, we've got an engulfing green, okay, which sets us for this little move up today. A decent trigger for a short term bounce. But then looking down to this level, this is 38.2, this is 23.6. This is the head and shoulders that was formed, again, which was uh, talked about, what we have been talking about in the morning report. Okay, this was a break of this neckline that I had. Some people might take it off here, 38.2. I took the long here, okay, put my stop to entry after this candle, came down, got stopped, and it seems moved higher. I am expecting and looking for reversal signals around here. Okay, I haven't got it yet. Uh, RSI is uh, still trading on the buy zone. By, by, by that I mean in the hourlies it's above 50. I've got a doji, but that's not good enough for me, especially after a strong green candle up. But I'm looking for, for, for reversals. I'm either looking for a break back through this support level with a move under 50 to confirm, or I'm looking for a decent sequence, and by that I mean I want to see a four-hour engulfing candle, uh, which I'm probably not going to get, or at least a one-hour engulfing candle off the top. A small doji like this after a strong move up is pretty irrelevant, really. Um, a lot of analysts have been saying, doesn't matter what Trisha says today, uh, the market will, will, will keep selling uh, euro dollar. Um, and I, I think they're correct. I think um, I think it's going to push down. So I'm then looking, going back to my daily, 
and then looking for a breakthrough 129.27 and I'm looking to get down to this level. Obviously pause is around here on the on the way down 126. Remember it's going to be fifth wave, it's not going to be as an easy ride, you're not going to have you know, 10 or 12 down days like we have here. You're going to get a choppy five wave sequence down to around this sort of level. But I'm still a very strong long term bear on um, on Euro dollar. Any questions? You're quite not today. Okay. Come here. Chasing that round. Um, I'm not going too strong. I mean, it should be that that that's the head. So if you want to play by the rules, it lines up actually with my weekly resistance line. So it actually comes in at 133. The figure is the exact um, target for a head and shoulders breakout. But anywhere around here, an ABC. If you're going to take it as an ABC, a breakout, a confirmed breakout. Basically, you've got this strong move up, okay, and it broke the cam the, the, this um, this neckline yesterday. So here was your breakout, but I don't count candles with spikes after breakouts. So here I didn't take the long. Woke up this morning, I saw this candle taking her out with a very very small spike to the upside. And I took that long signal, that I think it's a 7 o'clock candle, or took it at 7 o'clock, I should say, it's a 6 or 7 candle. Um, then you basically want to be putting your, if, you, if, you, if you're sure, and, and it's, if, I, if I see a head and shoulders formation at, um, at the end of what I think is a fifth wave, then I'm going home and I'll, I'll start, I'll, I'll give it room to breathe and... Um, I'll look at uh, building the position, but because I'm seeing this as a fourth wave correction, okay, I don't want risk on because I know 23.6 is here, which is the only the level that you know she has to she doesn't have to take, but she can take. Um, so my my reward is very very small. So I'm trying to get stops in as soon as possible, but the the signal was there was that close above the neckline. Your, your, your stop then really wants to be a close underneath the last uh, the last dip low, which was here at 130.88. I actually had mine in, like I said, very, very quickly. The move that is then up on a proper head and shoulders breakout, you take the length from the head to the neckline, you then take it from the breakout line up, so that would be to there. If you're taking this as an ABC, which it could well be, Remember, this is the fourth wave, and the fourth wave is normally in an ABC sequence. Then the breakout would be there, 132.61. But as I said before, euro dollar can turn and go back down lower anywhere in this area, 23.6, 38.2. So the risk reward for me, I'm a long term bear, so I don't want to be building a short position. Um, and getting caught on the wrong side, I'd prefer to. I'd prefer to. Sh to, to um, sorry, don't, I don't want to be building a long position and getting caught on the wrong side. Is what I should have said. What I prefer to do is try and scalp a bit for the run up, and then when she gets towards this sort of area, I'll be looking to take profit and then build a position to get back down lower. Um, advice is on Elliott Wave. Um, there, there is a website called Elliott Wave International that will give you the basics. Um, a book that I recommend to everybody um, who starts trading is a book called Forex Conquered uh, by John Pearson. Uh, that has any wave inside, but the basics. I don't believe it or not. I mean, I know, I know. Looking at all my charts, you'd think, well, this guy's fanatical about Elliott Wave. I'm not. Okay, I'm fanatical about fib levels. And um, that is why they're just 
because Elliott Wave will sometimes break the sequence, but it will still run to 261.8%. And that's why I'm not, um, I don't stick to the rules, basically. Um, but yeah, Elliott Wave International, and plus, also, you can get ABC sequences that can turn into ABC, X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. And if you, if you do get too stuck in your ways with Elliott Wave, um, you know, one, two, threes can end up being ABCs. Uh, just, just look at it, just look at the 161.8. If she breaks 161.8, then look for the fifth wave target. If she doesn't break 161.8%, then, um, then, um, then she's probably just an ABC correction. Okay, um, so that's my view on that pair, okay. A bounce, but I do believe that's all we're going to get. What has, what, what has changed? The only thing that's really changed, as far as I can see, is we, we, we've still got problems in, in Europe. The only thing that I can see is we, the, the US has started to print some good figures, which hasn't happened for quite some time, and that's why I think we're going to we're going to start flowing back to the dollar again. I know we run to the dollar as a safe haven, but I think we're also going to run to the dollar when that dollar yen trade pushes up, on the back of the Dow pushing up, on the back of good non-farm payroll figures on Friday. Um, and I, I always say to people, you've got to trade what you see, not what you want to see. Now, I see three waves down with this being a fourth wave correction. Other traders will see the three waves down as an ABC, but I get bias off candles, and candles are also known as price action, and you cannot ignore a monthly candle as big as that, as strong as that, uh, and as aggressive and as engulfing as that, as that, and that has to give you your bias uh, going into December. Um, it does for me anyway. I don't ignore large candle formations, and the, and, the, and the higher the time frame, the more relevance they have. I don't trade down to five minute charts, as guys in the room will tell you. Very similar, isn't it? Just flicked over there, and you can hardly tell the difference. Tell the difference here, of course. Okay, monthly. Look when these large monthly candles happen. I mean, they don't happen very often. This is sort of decent doji off the top. That's an engulfing green, okay, just inside. You've got to catch them. You've got to look for them. They don't just, you know, it's not hard to do it, is it? At the end of every month, just flick on a monthly chart. Spikes here, okay. Engulfing red here, okay. Notice that she never takes out the high after the engulfing red. Notice she never takes out the low, okay. Get a pullback, but that's it. Here, we've got an engulfing red. The bias has to be to the downside. Weekly candle. Not sure or wasn't sure where this C wave is going to end up, but one, two, three, four, five, A, B. Looks like that C is now confirmed down here. Okay, this is an A, B, C correction. Now the move lower. Um, this weekly candle, strong. You look at it against this candle here. It's taken out the whole of that range and it's to the downside. Just trying to break the 50 RSI to vert the weekly candle virtually confirming this bearish move as well. Dailies. Okay, these are all my plots. Sometimes I lose the plots there, but one, two, three, four, five. Back down in B. And this was a, I can only see a three wave sequence here. And that's why I, I, I was tempted, or when it was hanging around the top, this was up, up in five. I thought this was just going to be a small um, four and then the, the move up in fives, but it didn't happen. Okay, and she's turned over, as they say in rugby. Let's get rid of these so you can see better. Okay, and this is what I think is going to unravel here. Strong one, corrective two, down to three, which is a little bit short. Okay, that wasn't the short, sorry, a little bit long. To spike through on this candle, but look at look at the candle formation. This is also if you've got to read these charts, they're, they're like a book. What can you see? 
Well, I can see we're in the cell zone. I can see I'm underneath all of these strong uh, red candles. I can see I'm underneath my moving averages. And I can see that these little candles here are exactly that. They're little candles. This is an aggressive sell-off. This is a correction. It's, it's, that's not rocket science. Okay, and then we take it down again. Let's take it down to four hours. Okay, this being that move down. So we're looking this last move down. This is uh, two three. So we're looking for a pullback between twenty three point six and thirty eight point two. One two three. Okay, anywhere in this sort of zone. Getting down to hourly chart. Notice how I've plotted my 23.6 and my 38.2. I can see a head and shoulders formation. It's a head and shoulders in a fourth. It's not a head and shoulders in a fifth. So I'm only expecting a small pullback. So here's my head. It's a false breakout. There are false breakouts, okay, in, uh, in, in the currency market. A real breakout, and the head and shoulders will take you to here, 157.84, which I can't see. And that's why I always think that this is going to be a false breakout. Because the highest I'm expecting her to get is here, 157.19. But she's completed, really. I mean, she's completed her task. She's moved up in three waves. Um, she's in between 23.6 and 38.2. She's yet to go negative. Okay, so we just need a little bit more of a push through. And I'm looking for this four hour candle. Notice what the time is. We've got another 30 minutes, okay. I can get this four hour candle to close under here, under 156.14, then that's good enough for me to start getting short again and looking for, looking for prices to drop underneath this level. And then I'm looking here, 153.82, and then I'm looking here, 151 the figure, okay, in this five wave sequence level. So I'm basically still as you can tell, uh, still strongly bullish on um, on the dollar. Um, and also, look look at this. You know when we're talking about um, we're talking about the strong moves down. That's a strong red on the daily chart. This is an impulsive move. This is a corrective move. Okay. This is this 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 shows slowing. This shows a slowing down in the move, which we get when the, when we lose momentum. This also isn't rocket science. You can see when she's bouncing around here out, we get some diversions off the RSI and she starts to build. Look at the high here. It's lower than the high here. So again, we've got divergence off the high and she's starting to drop. Not really the signal to get short until she drops below. But a breakthrough here. If I can get a close on the hourly below 156.02, then I'm going to go short. Um, if I can get that four hourly candle to engulf, then I'm going to go short. Put it this way, there's not going to be a lot that's not going to stop me going short on um, on uh, on sterling dollar for a move down. Any questions on that uh, on that pair? I've just looked out the window and I can't actually see more than about two feet because of the snow. There's actually my wife says I'm prone to exaggeration, especially when it comes to lengths, and I reckon there must be three foot outside my office window at the moment. That's Brits, eh? Not used to the weather. Not used to the snow, anyway. Okay, any questions about um, about sterling dollar? Yeah, it's crazy. It just doesn't look like it's going to stop. I'm in the north of England. Um, I grew up in Sheffield. I'll give you a little bit of history. And uh, my father moved us down south when, and that's why I... I um, I joined the money markets and, and worked as a, a foreign exchange broker um, for 16 years. I married a girl I went to junior school with, so I moved back to Sheffield. And when the snow was last like this, uh, I was 12 years old, which is over 30 years ago. So. Okay, Aussie dollar.
real this, this, this then starts to I'm, I'm, I'm correlating everything I'm trying to combine views with regards to the dollar, with regards to euro sterling to get my bias on my euro on my sterling I'm looking at yen pairs I'm looking what is it? I'm looking at 14 different pairs okay, to try and get um, to try and get an idea of where I want to go okay let's break it down monthly engulfing candle okay a full engulfing did would have liked to have taken to, to have taken out the range but it's not quite pit perfect but anyway around 10,000 uh, a decent uh, reversal candle weekly you see my plots one two three four five a b c down and then this if it is a bullish sequence I don't even know if it is yet. Um, then she's got to pull lower soon. And if we go down to a daily chart, it's too daily. This is where I'm talking about my fibs going out of line. Okay, one, two, three, four crosses over. But this is five, two sixty one point eight percent. Okay, this is this is a key level. And he did, she did us proud. Um, head and shoulders, I can see. I can see this is a break of the neckline. But what has happened? She's come back. Okay, she's come back inside. So then I have to start asking myself, is this an ABC correction? Or is it a, uh, a trend reversal lower? And when I'm saying a reversal lower, you remember the ABCs, okay, that A is in five waves, B is in three waves, C is in five waves. 38 point, uh, sorry, 38.2, 61.8%. Oops, what's happened there? Sorry about that. Okay. 50. 61.8% down here. So, how do I build this view? Well, I was shorting it around here because I thought um, that we're going to get a head and shoulders breakout. I took profit around here. I'm standing aside. What have I got here? I've got a merger of my moving averages, and that to me is extremely strong. Okay. It's also getting up towards the 50 mark, which is another signal, which is extremely strong. So I'm still bearish on, the, on this uh, on this pair. And the reason, another reason, okay, we've got this level, which is a previous low. Notice how they're all coming in together. So this level here, 97.22, I've got two moving averages. I've got a previous low. Remember, support then acts as resistance, resistance acts as support when it's broken. So there's numerous le uh, reasons why that level, 97.22, is going to hold. Okay. Break it down into time frames. Remember, I said 97.22, didn't I? Okay. Here, strong move down, pull back to 50%. So then I'm looking for 161.8 to give me the third wave. Okay, here, move down, pull back. Here, move down, pull back. She cannot push through this level. If she pushes through this level, then this whole move down has been an ABC correction. And the next move is to the upside. If she holds this level, I want a reversal candle. And I'm not getting it as yet, but I want a four hourly, an hourly, anything, really. To get me short, I want to get underneath the 50 again. Then I'm going to ride it down to here, 94.37. Expect to bounce up in four. And then I want this level, 89.76. Okay. And then that brings me back to 61.8%, which is actually 88.80. But we know that the moves down, the corrections happen in, um, in three ways. So looking for a move down in uh, in five. I've gone too far actually. Sorry. This is the level. Okay. 
I'm looking for a move down. A move up would be. I mean, we're talking obviously into into next year, and then a move back down in C. But my short term, my short term, I'm looking for a move lower, and I want it to happen soon. I don't want this level to take, get taken out. Okay. Notice as well, we're not in the sell zone, are we? We're in the buy zone on the hourly chart. There's nothing to suggest that this is going lower yet. A long-term view, I've got a monthly candle. It's giving me a decent view. I've got head and shoulders formation. I've got solid resistance here on about four different counts. So everything's pointing to that direction. But do I pull the trigger? No, I don't. Because she hasn't given me a signal to pull that trigger. Not one. I haven't got one. I've got, I've got a lower high at the moment, but it doesn't mean it's going to hold. Uh, I'm above my 15. I'm above my 62. I'm above this low. Okay, in a downtrend, we want lower highs, but we also want lower lows. I'm above 50. I'm a trend follower. This isn't a confirmed trend back down yet. When it is a confirmed trend back down, then I'm on it, and I'm on it in one unit, and then as she get, as she moves with me, I add in a break point, add in, add in. She pulls back. If I'm still, if my count still looks good, then I add again to improve my average, etc., etc., etc. It's also about money management, about building positions. It's not just about putting on a trade and going, oh, I've got 300 points out of that. If you've got 300 points out of the trade, you should have got 600 because you should be building it as it uh, as it moves with you. Any questions about um, about Aussie dollar? No, you're Swiss. It's good one at the moment. Anybody read the report this morning about Aussie New Zealand? No, it sounds like quite a strange cross, but it's going to be a big trade that one. Um, I think it is anyway. What does this say? going to look at your monthly. One, two, three, four overlaps again. Okay, down to five, but 261.8%. Um, here, okay, we had an engulfing red, which she didn't play out. Okay, if you if you've taken that engulfing red, and you just you just purely um, trade that monthly candle. Then you short it, and you put your stop above the high. So you're actually not out of the game yet. And it's come, probably come to, it's coming down towards your monthly, your um, your entry level. Here we've got another engulfing red. Okay, so they are still looking uh, pretty bearish. This pair. Okay, weekly. The only thing I'm concerned about is that 261.8% level. Okay, and I'm also concerned. If stocks rally, Euro Swiss would normally rally. Um, so I'm taking the view, but I'm taking it. I, I'm keeping my mind open at the moment. Okay, engulfing red weekly, you move lower. Okay, remember stops above the high. Engulfing red weekly, you move lower. Thirteen thousand was obviously a good, a good level to target. Um, treble zero. Okay, so we're forming this, this this doji this week. But remember, this that candle's not completed as yet. So is this move up one, and is this move down a correction? At the moment, it's too early to tell. Um, what we do know is this move down was impulsive. This was corrective in three ways. Okay, this move down has then been impulsive. And what can we see in this move down? Well, we can see if we take it down to shorter time frames. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C up. Okay, one, two, three, four, five will be here to form three. So the bear count is not finished on Euro Swiss, which then coming back to Euro dollar means that surely the bear count in Euro dollar is not finished. This is a key level. Okay, this level, this zone, just here, I think it's 3243, uh, the zone. If it breaks above there, then the count, the bear count could be invalidated 
because this inside four will take out the bottom of one, and that's getting back to our earlier wave. Okay, so very, very key level here at the moment. If she takes it, then Euro Swiss could rally and rally higher quickly. Because remember, this whole wave back down would have been an ABC. If she holds this level, then the bear count is still alive. And we're going to look at 128.59 as the interim target. And then a break of 128.59. So we're down to here, 122.58. The five wave sequence lower. Okay, so at the moment I'm standing aside on Euro Swiss. I'm looking at it. I want to get short Euro Dollar. If she gives me a reversal signal here, where again we haven't got anything. I mean the market's really going to be in pause mode now until after Trichet's spoken. Um, but um, it's looking good. It's looking. It's still looking good for a, for a, for a bear count. And if I don't get a bear count, if I do, if it does take out this level, by the way, am I going to take it when it breaks it? No, I'm not. I'm going to look for a pullback. And the reason I'm going to look for a pullback is because I've got this. One, two, three, four, five. This is the level. Okay. So if it breaks this level, I'm expecting it to hit my resistance here. One, one thirty-two sixty-four. I then want to move down to a, to around one thirty-one in a choppy. Three wave sequence back down. That's my signal to go long. I'm not buying on tops. Okay. I buy in the middle. And that's what I think will happen. It'll hit 132.76 and move lower. If it refuses this level, then this is a fourth wave correction. And the next move is lower. So very, very crucial for a lot of outlooks really is, uh, is this, uh, this zone here. It's 132.31. 132.43 zone. Okay. Any uh, any questions about Euro Swiss money management? Um, Two percent of your trading equity per trade. Um, you basically want to. If you if you I, I don't use tight stops. What I prefer to do is put on small amounts or smaller amounts and wait to see if I'm right. If I'm right. Then as the market moves up, obviously I'd start to gain profit. I then move in my stop. I then add into the position. Okay. And what I mean by that is I'll, I'll then add another unit to, to improve my, my exposure into the market. Because then every pit that goes up, I'm then two units long, uh, or two units short. Um, but my risk is still 2%. Okay, because I've used that amount of profit that I've gained off that first unit um, to, to hold it. Okay, um, and then I'm just looking for for, for large moves. Um, I will normally only get up to maybe three units um, before I stop, and then I'm looking for for, for key levels. Um, sometimes I get out of all three at the same time. Um, If there's a lack of lack of follow through, it, it, it depends because, like I said, it, I'm I'm always I'm always looking for um, I'm always looking for a big picture. Um, I will do my towards the end once once we've um, once we've gone through the other pairs. Um, it's hard to say with the lack of follow through. It, I've got take take euro dollar. For instance, now, okay. Now, if I get a signal to go short, then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put my stop loss above all those key levels that I talked about. Um, when it starts moving lower, I'll, I'll add into it. Um, but I'll only be in, I'll only be on for tiny. Well, not tiny. I'll, I'll, but I'll have I'll have it so that I can have a 200 point stop loss and not lose sleep about it. Um, because I have to give my my views room to breathe, room to breathe. And like I said, I'm I'm looking for signals with to coincide with those views. So normally, if I get an engulfing green candle 
or an engulfing red candle. If I put my stop loss above it, um, that's normally protection enough. Um, if, I, if that gets taken, then I look for another signal to go short higher, higher up or, or, or long lower down. Uh, Aussie dollar was was the the last one that we built. Uh, took the first at this sequence down and took took the first short. Um, I think it was around here actually. I can't remember until I get my P and L sheet out, and I'll see. I've got time to do that at the moment. Um, I think we took the first short around here, uh, and then added in around here on this, uh, I think this was a four hour engulfing candle, just here, um, and then added in on the break of here, and then took profit down here. Like I say, it's, you just got to look for signals. Sometimes the signals don't work out. But here, you know, you've got an engulfing red candle after a strong move down at a resistance level, okay? It moves down, but it's, it's squeezed in between. But you can still take it short. But when you start getting spikes, that's when that's, that, that's, that's your time to get out. Um, like I said, I'm always looking at larger time frames to confirm, uh, to confirm the candles. And that's one of the reasons why I never look down really to a five minute chart. I might look down to see whether or not there's some small inside fibs in there. Um, but I'd never take a signal off a five minute chart. And um, I think we better talk about dollar yen quickly. Hmm. Okay. Previous low is held. It's always going to be a bit of support. All the way back from 1996. Impulsive, <laughs> corrective, but triangle formation. What do we have? Or what, what have we just had? We've had an engulfing green candle. Okay, not the biggest, but it's still closed above the high, and that's a good enough signal. Um, to have a bias to the upside. Okay, weekly, just clipping the 50, but it is above um, above the first resistance. Also, the move look up looks impulsive. Daily chart broke through, came back, tested twice, and then moved higher. Yesterday we nearly got the engulfing candle, but not quite. Four hour chart. These moves up are impulsive. One, two, three. Small pullback in four. I think five takes us up to here. 86 the figure. Might chop around in here first. Might just make a bit of a triangle formation. Not quite sure. I mean, this, this move up yesterday was aggressive. We moved down overnight with inside soldiers, I and mean, we talked about this in the morning report. Um, and this candle here, this four hour candle, it's got seven minutes to go. It's taken out three, well, 12 hours worth of worth of trading, so it's bullish. Um, a break of the high, 84.41. And then, uh, like I said, it is the fifth wave, so it's going to be choppy. So you can't rule out and move back down a little bit first, maybe towards this sort of level, 83.77. But the long term bias is to the upside. 86 the figure. Uh, it's always um, I don't know what the edge of, of the system is. It's not a system anyway. I mean it's uh, it's forecasting. It's it's just forecasting with confirmations. Um, the good thing is because you're looking for confirmations, then the majority of time. If you are wrong, the market's going to tell you you're wrong pretty quickly. Um, I'm always looking at a one-hour chart for that trading above the uh, above the 50 RSI. I'm always looking for trading above 
um, my moving averages, um, and I'm looking at impulse and corrective uh, moves. With regards to the entry and exits, it's it's difficult because sometimes the, the market will break a low or break a high, but it'll be a false breakout and it'll come back down. Um, what I have a tendency to prefer to do is to look at the overall trend and to buy on the pullback as, a, as opposed to buying on the break of the high. So obviously the long-term trend was here. If you read the morning report yesterday, I said there's two wave counts here. This was either a move down in four, or this was one. This the wave count was completed here, and this was a new wave back up. Either way, we had to expect a move back up pretty soon, and we but we ended up buying this in the room at 83.54. Um, I only took 20 pips out of it because it hit my uh, my resistance level to the upside, and I thought that was it, and I missed out on this on the rest of the move. But it, it's still a plus. Um, a bit annoyed about it because obviously I've been then going long again today. Um, so I have more of a tendency, like I say, to pop by and pull back, and then I can turn around to myself. Well, if she closes below that level, then I know I'm wrong. But I'm always, as I said to you before, I'm always looking at the big, big picture, and then breaking it down into sh into shorter time frames try and get entry and exit levels and pullbacks are either a place to um, to get long or to improve your average if you are already long okay that's uh, that's a lot I'm afraid um, I hope you've enjoyed it uh, if you have got any questions just post them on the blog I'll, I'll, if you can find it <laughs> I've, uh, I know um, FX Street of um, of uh, re, uh, redone the the, uh, the website at the moment, and uh, I think they've had a few teething problems. The book is called Forex Conquered. It's by John Pearson. So it's Forex Conquered by John Pearson. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Uh, take care and uh, and good luck with your trading. Okay, bye for now.